Welcome back guys, Keys to Adventure. Finally back with another video, I'm sorry it took so long. I have been through so many changes in the past a month or two now. More for you guys really, but I haven't posted much just because there hasn't been much going on, but the last month or two has been a ton of changes. I recently got a new job. I now work for a Mercedes dealership. Um, I got a garage space, so there should be quite a few more videos here, especially of this thing because well, I don't know if you can see, my dash got taken out. I just did a heater core in that. I didn't really want to film that because let's just say I was really frustrated for the most of it, but we have a new bumper toolbox. I'll go over that. We got it. Well, you guys haven't seen this yet. I got a new toolbox. I sold the Craftsman and I got this with my student discount. So I got that really cheap, but we have a lot of stuff to do, but this video is mainly going to be about the gauge cluster. So as you'll be able to tell with this one, the needles are already taken off, but you'll see why here in a second. The stock MR2 gauge cluster leaves a lot to be desired. But this, this is amazing. This is a stock replacement, sort of. This goes, this is an overlay for your stock gauge cluster, and it is actually backlit. I will leave a dis uh, link in the description on where you can get these, they're actually customizable. I had mine go up to 10K, even though the stock cluster is only able to rev out to eight, but it still shows a little better. Um, it's also black with blue backlighting. So at night, all of this glows blue, including this. Yeah, I know, I'm sorry. I didn't record the first part of this of actually taking the needles off, but that's pretty simple. You're just gonna take two spoons, um, as, as if you're scooping it out, one on each side, kind of like this, and you're just gonna press down on the handles softly. You'll feel it start to move up. Just keep going, it'll actually pop off, so make sure you catch those. Um, and you want to be as careful as you can with these needles not to hit them around, move them. They're extremely delicate. But um, other than that, the way you take the whole front cover off, there's these little tab holes here on the sides. You can see these here. You're just gonna press down each one of them and it'll actually just pop the front plastic off and you're left with a just pretty much blank plate. Now, as far as this, I've already taken the liberty on some of these to pull these off. There's just a couple twist ties here. You're gonna undo those twist ties, whoops, backwards. You wanna be very careful not to bend this because they are extremely delicate since they're technically plasma dials. Just pull these out, stretch them out, get them flat. And the wiring for this is actually incredibly simple. There's these plugs on each one of these, all three, that run to a single jumper pack that has what they call an inverter that's gonna take your 12 volt and actually power each one of these. So what I'm thinking of doing, we're gonna check and make sure it works. I'm thinking of taking the actual bulb out of one of these and using the socket because the bulbs actually sit inside these sockets. Let me pull one out to show you. So after a while of fiddling around, I figured out you actually can pull these out. I'm saving a couple because I do need the turn signals, high beams, stuff like that. They still are powered off of those. So try to keep as many of those undestroyed as possible. I had a couple failures, so onto this. Um, from what I've seen, I guess you're supposed to keep the old one behind it, but the problem I'm running into is these don't line up properly, so I'm not 100% sure what I'm gonna do, mainly because I need these pegs out of it in those holes, but I may cut around these and glue them in place. I haven't decided yet. I'll let you know here in a second. So after some not so careful consideration, some really bad choices, well, let's just say the stock dash, yeah, not usable. But with a little bit of ingenuity and a trip to the dollar store, some specifically fix all adhesive. Just dab a little on the butt end of these little prongs that the dial rests on. Make sure to spin them up so you don't get too much of that goop everywhere. And we are gonna notch these back where they belong. Sorry, I really can't tell what I'm filming. More just trying to get them glued on properly. But as you can tell when I angle it like that, the pins that were originally, sorry, uh, I'm out of it. I've been doing this for too long. The pins that were originally in the dash, not the dash, the pins that were originally in the faceplate are now in the aftermarket faceplate, so we no longer have to run cover on cover. 
So the light diffusion from the original bulbs through this is gonna look much better. So I realized after I sat down for a second waiting for the glue to dry, that I've kind of done a pretty iffy job on explaining exactly what I did. So I really haven't modified this other than gluing these posts in, and that's fine. I have modified the cluster quite a bit. So if we come in here and take a peek at the cluster, you can see I have my power wire coming out of, oh, lock that, this light hole right there. Um, I'm not 100% sure what that light hole was on the stock dash. I'm like 90% sure it was just another illuminator because yeah, why not? Um, but I ended up pulling the light out with a pair of pliers. I wiggled it for probably three or four minutes trying not to break it. I did break a couple bulbs. Excuse me. Sorry about the noise. But I pulled that out and actually clamped very lightly because they will crush. But I clamped the wire flat against the little pins that are inside. Um, let me grab a pin so you guys understand what I'm talking about. But these little pins, not really pins, they're more inserts. You can kind of see one of the ones I messed up here. They are very, very small. They're actually, if I can get this thing to focus, they're these little metal tabs on the side. And if you just pop them up a little bit and grab them with a pair of needle nose, the whole thing just pulls up and out. I'm sorry about my dirty hands. I've been working in a shop all day and in, now in my shop. But that pops out and you can gently pull them out. I did trim them down a little bit, tried a couple times. If you just expose a little bit of the wire, pop it on, it will, after a little bit of finagling, you can get it to solder down and it will stay. And then it's just a matter of taking, I did it with a pick. I have a set of snap-on picks. You just push them back in place. They will seat. I didn't heat shrink mine for the fact that I'm an idiot and I forgot and I really gave up. I don't really care. Um, I can go back and do it later if I really need to. But once those are in, I highly, highly, highly recommend taking a DMM. If you don't have a digital multimeter, please go get one. You won't be able to do this project correctly without it, but get a DMM, learn how to use it, play around with it, and then before you go and plug your bulb in, your bulb socket, because you're no longer putting a bulb in its place, go test the polarity. If you don't properly test the polarity, you'll blow it up. And they say it in their instruction manual, as horrible as it is, don't do it backwards. Um, it'll ruin it, you'll have to send it back. I think they're in, I don't know. I think Poland, mine came out of Warsaw. But it's a lot of money to ship it back, it's a lot of money for them to ship it back, and you've gotta pay for the repairs. So don't, don't do that. But once you get your polarities figured out, the bulb, you can really kind of just orient it however you need to. There's two sides, as long as you rotate it right, you can get it out. And then it's a matter of just routing it up and over. Um, this clear cover that's on top, you can take it off. Um, this clear cover is what keeps the, the, your little actuator motors for the RPMs, gas, everything on. If you gently pull on it, they're only like little set pins that keep them connected and powered. If you pull those out, you can actually take the whole thing out. And then I ran my wires up and out that section there and around the back. Now, it's not permanent this way because I am gonna reroute them all back behind the gauge cluster and hide them, make it all nice and tidy. But as you can see here, there is a good probably 10 feet of wire. So I'm gonna have to cable manage it zip tie it all up, and then on top of that, there's three cables for your gauges, and I have to route all of those as well. But I'm gonna try to make that look as good as possible on video. I don't know if all the video I took was good. I was kinda just trying to get it done because I do have to drive this to work again tomorrow, but it at least gives you an idea of how I did it and how you can do it. Um, and on top of that, I really, really hope you guys ask. I would be glad to go over and help any of you guys that need help it's not that complicated, but 
like I said, this will become your best friend, the digital multimeter. Harbor Freight used to give them out for free, um, but even then, they're not that expensive. I have one, it's a blue point. It was given to me for free when I went to NTI. Yeah, the only free thing you get there. But you need to get one. I'll be honest with you guys, I'm not 100% sure where we left off last time. Um, I did get the ga gauges put in. It's centered as best as I can really get it without trimming too, too much, which is really not that big of a deal. The only place you can really kind of see it is on this side here and a little bit on this side there. It's not too big of a deal. It doesn't bother me. All the gauges are hooked up working properly. The RPM is correct. The speedometer is correct. Gas gauge, temp, all that was working. The issue is right now that there is no illumination on the back because all of the bulbs are taken out. So I'm going to have to put new bulbs back there to replace it. As you can probably see, I also don't have the plastic put back on just because I haven't had a chance to. Um, this video took a lot longer to get out just because I've had so much going on. I do have the MR2 keys being made, everything on top of this, but this is gonna be the end of the video here. I appreciate you guys for watching and I hope this helps you install these um, Moman gauges.